Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A Wayne County business owner uses a popular Christmas character to make a statement about Governor Whitmer. Plus, the FDA approves emergency use authorization of a popular treatment to fight coronavirus. Dr. Frank McGeorge will break down why timing is important in its availability. But we're going to begin with breaking news from Lansing, which is where the Michigan Board of Canvassers has officially certified the state's election results. Good to have you with us tonight at 6. The state board ended the controversy in the state of Michigan over the November 3rd election. It has voted 3 to 0 to certify the election results with one ab uh, abstention. A local force, Rod Maloney, is live in Lansing with a story on how the board got there and what lawmakers across the state are saying about the decision. Rod? Yeah, Kimberly, you know, for all of the controversy, the horn honking that went on outside the Capitol here, for all the lecturing of the board in terms of what its role is supposed to be, the board did what it set out to do today, which is to certify the election. Early on in the meeting, Vice Chairman Aaron Van Legenveld asked this question of Detroit election supervisor Christopher Thomas. I mean, we're not a court here. We, we don't have judicial power. Uh, we don't have the authority to, to conduct a trial here on whether or not election fraud occurred. Am I correct? You are correct. And in the end, the Board of Canvassers voted. Chair Bradshaw. Yes. Vice Chair Van Langveld. Yes. Ms. Matuzak. Yes. The reaction has been, strangely enough, unanimous in saying the system worked. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson said in a statement, quote, democracy has prevailed. Today's vote of the State Board of Canvassers to certify Michigan's November election confirms the truth. The election was fair and secure, and the results accurately reflect the will of the voters. As for Republican House Speaker Lee Chatfield, his trip to Washington, D.C. over the weekend to see President Donald Trump stirred controversy. In his statement, he pushed back on all of that criticism. Quote, the board fulfilled its legal duties today in certifying the results, and now our democratic process can move forward. This is America at work. I am also glad the conspiracy theories pushed by far too many Democrats and some talking heads in the media for attention and personal or political gain have finally been put to rest, end quote. One person in the middle of the controversy, Wayne County Board of Canvassers Vice Chairman Jonathan Kinlock, had this reaction. Glad that this, uh, this nightmare is over. And the governor put out a statement this evening saying that uh, she's very happy that this way it went the way it did. And now Joe Biden will get Michigan's 16 electoral votes. Back to you. Well, Rod, did the board of canvassers have anything else to do? Any other actions after that vote? What happens next? Yeah, well, what, the, what, what next is the, the, the electoral votes get to Joe Biden, but what the, the Board of Canvassers also said, and they did this unanimously, is that they believe that there needs to be an audit of this election and that the irregularities that were alleged in all of this still need to be looked at. And in fact, uh, the one uh, vote, the abstention vote, came from Norm Schenkel, and he said that he thinks that Michigan's election system needs to be revamped and improved for 2022. Okay, we'll continue to follow it, see if it happens. Rod, we appreciate it. Now, meantime, President-elect Biden is moving forward with the presidential transition as President Trump continues to fight the election results. Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris meeting with mayors on the coronavirus pandemic today. The Biden administration also naming six cabinet nominees, including uh, some diverse appointments for Homeland Security and National Intelligence, and former Secretary of State John Kerry being named as climate czar. President Trump uh, continues to fight the election results. Some of his supporters, though, questioning how legitimate that fight is. They allege fraud outside the courtroom, but when they go inside the courtroom, they don't plead fraud and they don't argue fraud. That criticism comes as a federal judge in Pennsylvania became the latest to dismiss a Trump administration lawsuit calling their allegations of fraud speculative. All right, let's get a check of the Monday weather. Ben Bailey joins us with a first look at the forecast. Hi, Ben. Temperatures right around average for this time of year, but we're headed towards our coldest night of the forecast, at least going forward. We're right at 40 and we're dry right now. We will not be tomorrow, uh, but at least that's how we're going to finish the evening. Skies will be partly to mostly cloudy and we've put it down there headed towards cold. We're expecting those temperatures to head into the 20s tonight. That'll be your four zone forecast coming up. Weather impacts are the greatest here in the next two days and it is from rain 
and yes, some snow. You can see Thanksgiving Thursday and Black Friday will be some of our least concerning weather days in the forecast. So some good, some bad, and we'll run it down for you coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben, now to the latest on the coronavirus here in Michigan. State reporting 11,511 new confirmed cases with 65 new deaths. Though remember, it's Monday. That is a two-day total for yesterday and today. The new numbers brings the state's total number of confirmed cases to more than 313,000. There have been more than 8,000 total deaths from the virus. Also, the state reports 53 new outbreaks reported in Michigan schools. Meanwhile, the state's seven-day moving average for daily cases was 7,406 Sunday, the highest it's ever been, and the state's fatality rate is near 3%. Today, the city of Detroit announced it will allow outdoor dining throughout the winter. This comes as restaurant and bar owners across the state try to adjust to the state's restrictions on indoor dining. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester live from Royal Oak tonight where they are taking business outside. Hank. Yeah, Devin, and we've seen this play out in many communities all over Metro Detroit. You see the tenting here behind me in front of Lily Seafood in downtown Royal Oak. It gives them an option to stay open, to bring in some money, to make sure their employees can be paid, and also give you, the customer, an option to dine out in a different way. They've popped up all over town, tents, igloos, covers from the rough weather, and more importantly, the only option for many restaurants and bars that still want to welcome guests. We're very concerned. We don't know if it's just going to be the three weeks. Honestly, we anticipate it'll probably be longer. You know, we're all just waiting to see what the numbers are going to be. Here at Lily Seafood in downtown Royal Oak, the tent is up, panels open to circulate air. Everything's being done to keep you safe, yet there's lots of concern and confusion. I feel like everyone's researching it um, by themselves and doing the best that they can through, you know, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Michigan Restaurant Association. Here at Congregation in Detroit, there's a large outdoor area. Heaters are out, no tenting as of right now. And with the colder air moving in, it's worrisome. We are just, you know, we're always ready to pivot and try and think of new creative ways to, to keep things going and keep people enticed. This locally owned business opened right before the first shutdown. Now they're adjusting again, hoping they can survive this financially. The first time around, I held the place down solo for three months, and now this time I'm kind of trying to, I'm doing what I can to keep my team employed um, and keep them going financially. And while the rules are laid out by the Michigan Department of Health and also the Michigan Liquor Commission, each city is also working to kind of enforce these rules, whether it be by the police or, or the mayor's office. Uh, they've been making their way to different areas throughout not only Birmingham and the city of Detroit, making sure that these outdoor tents are, in fact, following the guidelines laid out by the state. We're live here tonight. Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. Great, Hank. A blow-up Grinch is making a statement outside a Wayne County restaurant in response to the state's restrictions on restaurants. The character popped up in front of Tarago in downtown Trenton on Friday. It has a sign around its neck saying, Gretch the Grinch. Gretch, of course, is in reference to Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Victor Williams spoke to the owner today who says he's simply frustrated that he has to close down his business yet again. Well, there's a lot of controversy surrounding this Christmas inflatable nicknamed Gretch the Grinch, but the owner of this restaurant says it was one of the only ways he felt he could get a message across. We're following all the guidelines and it's just a, it's just frustration. We're just trying to survive. So Chirago owner Jeremy Soraki literally put those frustrations on display in the form of a holiday classic. Well, the Grinch is, is kind of the restaurant business. My staff and myself way to tell the governor that we don't think she's doing a good job. The Trenton business owner isn't a fan of the two day notice given by the governor when putting out the latest three week restrictions and now he had to lay off dozens. We have 100, 150 employees that need this job. They want this job. Summer with Soraki, like the woman who wrote this letter who has immediate family members battling COVID. These are her words. I absolutely love your Grinch. Shutting down is not the answer. She's not offended at all. It's a great way to, to let out your frustration and it's better than going to the streets with rocks. And those who are not so happy with the form of protest. I put the Grinch up and people took it how they wanted to right away as it was an insult uh, to the hospital workers, to the health care workers. By no means was that our intent. We love them. Either way, he says he wants better leadership from the woman in charge of our state. 
people, if nobody's willing to work with her in the upper echelon of our government, then it might be her that's the problem. People will follow real leaders, and I don't think she's a leader. And Siraki says his customers have been quite supportive, keeping the business afloat with carryout orders, at least for now. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor, the U.S. making General Motors recall and repair nearly 6 million pickup trucks and SUVs. Decision by NHTSA will cost the automaker an estimated $1.2 billion. The vehicles included in the recall equipped with potentially dangerous airbag inflators from Takata. 27 people, including 18 in the U.S., have been killed, but hundreds have been injured by these inflators worldwide. GM had petitioned the agency four times starting in 2016, trying to avoid a recall. Takata used ammonium nitrate to create a small explosion to fill the airbags in a crash, but the chemical can deteriorate and explode with too much force. We've got a complete list of the recalled trucks on clickondetroit.com. All right, still to come here on Local 4 News at 6. Let's check in with Dr. Frank McGeorge. Two antibody treatments now have emergency use authorization from the FDA, but there are still some big hurdles in the way. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, why those treatments won't be widely available for a while, even for patients who could benefit most. Okay, Doc, but first, an 81-year-old is carjacked outside the Somerset Collection in Troy. We'll have the details 